Number 76. Water gas, a mixture of H2 and CO, is an important industrial fuel produced by the reaction of steam with red-hot coke, especially pure carbon. And then they give us this formula. But now we're doing letter B. So we did letter A already, so now let's move on to letter B. Letter B says methanol, a liquid fuel that could possibly replace gasoline, can be prepared from water, gas, and additional hydrogen at high temperature and pressure in the presence of a suitable catalyst. And then they give us this new reaction. So that's the one that I wrote down here. Two hydrogen gas plus carbon monoxide, CO gas, will yield us methanol. Under the conditions of the reaction, methanol forms as a gas. Calculate the delta H for this reaction and for the condensation of gaseous methanol to liquid methanol. Okay, so we have two equations that we have to do here. We have to calculate the delta H for the reaction shown on the left, and then they want us to also find the delta H for condensation of gaseous methanol to liquid methanol which is the one on the right over here. Condensation means that we're going from a gas to a liquid. So here's methanol, gas, here's methanol, liquid. Okay, so let's do it, right? We just gotta find the delta H's. We've done this many, many times before. And remember, in order to find a delta H, you gotta go in those tables to find out what the delta H values are uh, for these compounds, right? You're not going to have to memorize these. You're usually either going to be given these to you on your test or quiz, okay? Or you'll be able to use the appendix values, the charts. So I just went in the back of the textbook to get these numbers for you, and now we're ready to do the formula. What's the formula to find a delta H for a reaction? Oh, it's, it's this one, right? So I'm just going to maybe plug this in a little small, and maybe we'll, we'll be able to do both of them quickly. We're going to use the same formula, right? It's always the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. We first got to get one number for the left-hand side and one number for the right-hand side. Why did I put this in red and this in blue? I have no idea. <laughs> it, it was like it was like 3 a.m. when I was preparing this, so sorry, guys. Maybe if I just write this over, right? This would be negative 110. 0.52, and then this is negative 201.0. Okay. Now, for each one of them, we take the numbers that we found, and we're going to multiply them by how many we have in our balanced equation. Just make sure that it's balanced. But I do see that they gave me a coefficient already, so I'm not worried. So there's two H2s, which means that I would multiply this by 2. There was one CO, so I multiply that by one. There's one CH3OH, so I multiply this by one. Same thing if you want to do it on this side as well, right? Just to kind of prepare it. There was one methanol gas, so I'm just going to multiply this by one. And there was one methanol liquid, so I'm going to multiply this by one. Cool. Okay, now we have to get the sum right? So if you have multiple compounds on one side, I have to add them together. Literally, there's an addition here. So H2 plus CO, I just need to add these two together. But since there's only one compound here, I don't have to add anything. And the same goes for this. So uh, maybe I'll just run them, you know, through a cross. So this would just be the same as negative 110.52. And this would be negative 201.0. And then these numbers would be the same as well, as well. negative 201.0 and negative 239.2. Now I'm ready to do my formula. Delta H for the whole reaction is just products minus reactants. So in this example, it would be negative 201.0 minus negative 110.52, and then if I just wrote this one out, just to kind of streamline it, but you kind, you guys get it, right? Products minus reactants, negative 239.2 minus 
the negative 201.0. Subtracting by a negative just means, you know, keep change change, right? So you're really adding a positive if that helps you out when you're doing the math. But either way, you'll get the same answer. So let's see, what would be the delta H for this reaction? On the left-hand side. So let's see. Negative, negative 201.0 plus 110.52. I get negative 90.48. And that's kilojoules per mole. It's kilojoules per mole because that's the unit for delta H. All right, so we figured out one of them. So in this case, we're going to release 90.48 kilojoules. Okay, cool. And then let's just do the one on the right. Negative 239.2 plus 201. I get a delta H for the reaction of negative, so it's still exothermic. I'm releasing heat, 38.2 kilojoules per mole. Okie dokie. That one was fun. I like this formula. What do you guys think? So there you go. We just had to find the delta H for both reactions. And that's it, guys. They're both exothermic. They're both releasing heat. And yeah, thank you so much for viewing the video. Let me know if this helped you out in the comments. I love talking to you guys. Love seeing how you guys are doing in your classes. And keep up the awesome work. All right, you guys got this. Good luck on your future testing quizzes. And I will see you all in later lessons. Bye-bye.